What's up and welcome guys, I'm Luke Martin with ChopstickTravel.com and today I am in Georgetown, Penang, Malaysia. This is a city that is famous for its beautiful street art, its architecture and amazing history, but of course also its food culture. So there is so much good street food. We have picked out a ton to eat today and we are super excited to be making this video. Make sure you stay tuned till the end because we are going to be trying something I've never had before, which is a bowl penis so we will be eating this you heard that correctly with our friends Sheena and Thomas from chasing a plate and there's no better way to see Penang than on a bicycle so let's go Here it is. This is our first stop today on our Penang food tour. And you wouldn't expect it, but this is an extremely famous breakfast spot because it is in this very unassuming little alley. So let's go in. Okay, so this is our first spot today, and this is called Tochun Cafe, and it is a spot that is famous for having Kaya toast. So we've just ordered up two, and I'll tell you about those when they arrive, but we also ordered up a kopi, and I am just addicted to this stuff here in Malaysia. So here we have our kopi. I have to admit, we pretty much eat Kaya toast and kopi for breakfast every single day. So what makes this coffee so interesting is it's basically a very, very strong black coffee with a heavy hefty dollop of condensed milk on the bottom and then a little bit of hot water. So I'm gonna take a sip. So as you can see, this is an extremely thick cup of coffee from that condensed milk mixing with that very, very strong black coffee. So let's take a drink of this. Oh yeah, super, super strong. Almost like a little bit acidic and then creamy from that condensed milk and also quite sweet. That is like, Perfect cup of coffee for me. So this place is extremely popular even though it's quite unassuming in a small little alleyway I really like how they have it laid out. It's kind of built off the side of this building with sort of like makeshift roofing over top of this alleyway and it's just super popular spot it's not uncommon to have to wait for a seat here and I don't think they serve much but I know they serve nasi lemak and also the kaya toast kopi and then some drinks but they do it really well apparently as I mentioned earlier Sabrina and I have eaten kaya toast almost every single day for breakfast here in Malaysia but the stuff that we ordered up here looks extremely good so we have two beautifully cooked eggs. These are half boiled, but honestly, they are barely boiled. They are extremely creamy looking. And then we've got our kaya toast on the bottom. It is cubed. And what makes this place so special is the way that they cook this toast. They've got the toast toasting right over top of charcoal. So she's hand toasting them directly over the charcoal flames. And then kaya spread on top. And kaya basically is pandan and coconut mixed with a little bit of sugar and then made into this beautiful spread. This just looks amazing. Two boiled eggs on top, cube toast on bottom, and I'm ready to dig in. I really love how they serve it with this skewer for puncturing your eggs, but also with a spoon to eat toast kind of is a little bit unique, but I guess it's because these eggs are just so creamy. So I'm going to break into this guy right here, and he looks very plump and just ready to burst. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is a creamy looking egg. Mix that around. And then we've got one more over here. Oh yeah, this one is, that's that's the money shot right there. That is super, super creamy. Oh yeah, okay. So what I like to do is kind of spread it around all over the, the cubed toast and then grab a nice big bite. What makes this place so good is that generous serving of kaya on there. So that kaya is like quite sweet and almost kind of like a little bit fruity from that coconut. 
and then that charcoal toast on the bottom you can just taste it's super super smoky the eggs are unseasoned but they just give it like a nice creaminess so there's not any saltiness and that's where the toppings come in or the condiments so generally people will put a little bit of soy sauce on top so let's put a small amount of soy sauce I don't like too much it should be good and then also we have some pepper Put a little bit of that on I think this is white pepper and mix that around a little bit and we'll grab another bite here oh yeah this is gonna be good all right oh see you have to kind of use the spoon to ensure you get all those eggs on there mm. Mm. oh yeah so that just makes it all the better a little bit saltiness and then that spiciness from that pepper but really it's that sweetness from the kaya that is so good so my kaya was served with the soft boiled eggs on top but some people like to have them on the side and dip them in but my preference is to have it on top I just find it absorbs better into the toast and it's easier to eat but another thing I really like to do is take a piece of kaya toast here and then dip it right in my kopi and it soaks that kopi up incredibly let's try that so we are finished with breakfast and that was delicious it's really just light and satisfying a very easy breakfast to eat quickly and there's so many places you can eat kaya toast especially here in georgia and penang but all over malaysia so we're going to keep going and see what else we find today So we are sitting down with a beautiful bowl of Assam laksa and laksa comes in all kinds of different forms. So in the south and the north of Malaysia they will be quite different. In the north of Malaysia here in Penang we get Assam laksa which is a sour laksa. So let's, let's look at this bowl here. The main ingredient here is of course this beautiful rich looking broth. So this broth is, is made with lots of things. It is a fish mackerel broth and then spiced with chili, lemongrass, galangal, and then soured with the tamarind, which gives it that distinct Assam flavor. So then he puts a ton of ingredients. Of course, there's a whole bed of noodles under here, which are nice, bouncy looking noodles. And then huge chunks of the mackerel fish. Oh, and that just completely flaked off in my chopsticks. So then we've got some basil, cucumbers in here, onion, some bean sprouts, and then here we've got a fish ball, and then on top of this fish ball is a very interesting, unique flavored ingredient. This is the ginger flour, and this is another thing that just makes Assam laksa so delicious. It's really just a distinct flavor. Okay, I'm going to start with the broth, and just check that out. It's kind of brown in color. There's a couple of the little ginger flowers in there, and let's take a sip. That is just so full of flavor. Extremely rich, sour from that tamarind. Quite sour, actually. And then almost like a little bit bitter with those ginger flowers in there. You can definitely taste the fishiness from the mackerel because it is made with a mackerel fish broth. And there's just so much flavor going on there. There's also quite a deep spice as well. Let's go in for these noodles now. And these look like nice, thick, bouncy noodles. Okay, let's try this. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, those soak up the flavor of the broth really well. 
and they are quite bouncy but also kind of like easy to chew not too firm definitely not undercooked okay so i'm gonna fish around in this bowl just full of ingredients and i'm gonna look for a piece of the mackerel fish oh here we go okay there's a nice big piece here and we'll also grab some basil there's some onions in there a little bit of noodles and also something that i didn't even notice until now is there is some kind of julienned pineapple so that gives it a nice like sourness as well and tropical flavor and definitely get some broth and we'll try that out that is going to be a good spoonful mm. Mm. oh yeah oh man that is so good so that fish is completely boneless and then the pineapple was actually quite crisp and then gives it a nice like herb flavor as well from that basil. This is delicious. Every place kind of does it different and this place does it with a fish ball. So I'm gonna try this fish ball out. Mm. Oh yeah, that's delicious. It's got a nice kind of firm spongy texture and it as well does a really good job at soaking up all the flavors of that broth. As you can see, this broth is just extremely thick and rich and it's really important for Assam Laksa to have a good balance of flavors between the fishiness of the mackerel broth and the sourness, sort of tangy tamarind flavor. And this place definitely has it down. We've had some laksa in the past, Assam Laksa, which we kind of found was really heavy on the fish flavor or overly spicy or overly sour. So this one is just really good contrast, balanced flavor bowl. But we're gonna keep going today and we've got lots more to eat. If there is one dish here in Penang that can compete for the number one spot with Assam Laksa, it would certainly be Char Kui Tiao. So that is what we have come to have. We wanted to go to a very famous spot on CM Road here in Georgetown, but unfortunately they were closed. We have heard that this spot is just as good though, so we're going to order up some Char Kui Tiao. So as I mentioned, Char Kui Tiao and Assam Laksa are certainly two of the most popular, if not the most popular foods in all of Penang. Which one is the best is up for dispute, we'll say. But we just ordered up a beautiful big plate of Char Kui Tiao. So on this plate here, we have some massive prawns that he fried up fresh. And then what really makes Char Kui Tiao the dish it is, is the Kui Tiao noodles, which are a nice kind of flat, bouncy, sort of jiggly noodle. And then on top here, we've got some bean sprouts and then also Chinese sausage. He also threw some chives on there and then also tons of different sauces, oil and chili sauce. And this just looks amazing. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, we actually ordered it with a duck egg. So he cracked a nice looking duck egg on top and scrambled that in with the Char Kui Tiao. So let's dig into this. This Char Kui Tiao was cooked over top of some burning hot charcoal. So that gives it a nice smokiness. And as you can see, some of these bean sprouts and even the noodles have sort of been charred. So that should add a nice burnt kind of smoky flavor to it. And let's try that out. I've got a little bit of Chinese sausage, some bean sprouts, a duck egg, pretty much everything all in one bite. Oh, mm. oh. That is so smoky. That just coats your mouth in that charcoal smoke. It is a little bit spicy. And then those noodles, they're not too like firm or al dente. They've got this weird kind of jiggly, sort of gelatinous texture to them. And the Chinese sausage is actually a little bit sweet all together. That just works so well. I'm gonna go for one of these prawns and these just look amazing. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 
that is a meaty prawn. Just really, the prominent flavor there is that smokiness from those super, super hot charcoals he's burning over top of. Oh, it gives the noodles such an amazing, like, dimension of flavor that it wouldn't have if it's not cooked on charcoal. So we are in this food court here and there is so many different foods to choose from, but certainly the one that stands out is this char kway tiao stall, just because the smoke coming off of his charcoal wok is so potent. You can smell it from down the street. And he's got all the ingredients laid out fresh there. And I'd have to say that my favorite ingredient is this Chinese sausage. It almost has like a caramel sweetness to it. That is so delicious. So as I mentioned, there are so many different kinds of foods you can try here and something else that caught our eye was this beautiful plate of satay. So just check this out here. We have ordered up five lamb and five chicken. It's served with a peanut kind of spicy sauce and then some raw cucumbers and raw onions and they were just cooking right over top of charcoal. I really just love how they cook the satays in the old fashioned way by using the bamboo fan. So they use the fan to keep the the heat hot and to get the charcoal going but these just look incredible as you can see they have just completely charred on the exterior and it looks like they were all marinated in some sort of a sauce too so let's try these out okay I'm gonna start with the lamb as you can see it's got kind of a darker color than the chicken and let's try this out there's no sauce mmm oh wow mmm that is nice and tender. That completely pulled off that stick effortlessly. It's got a little bit of a kick of spice to it, almost kind of like a pepper spice, and then also a little bit of a sweetness in that marinade. So now I'm gonna try the chicken. And as you can see, there's a much larger piece of chicken on here than there was in the lamb. And it also looks like it's kind of layered, like chicken meat and maybe skin or fat, and then meat again. So. I'm only gonna go for half this one. Oh. Mmm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. The saute is so delicious. It's so simple, but so effective at appetizing your taste buds. So just completely submerge that in that peanut chili sauce. Try that out. This is the other piece of the chicken. Mmm. Oh, that sauce is delicious. That sauce has a strong peanut flavor, almost like peanut butter. Not too spicy. It's actually quite light. Sometimes you might get some that are really like a creamy, really like peanut butter. But that one's more of a light hint of peanut. And definitely, you gotta chase that with one of these cucumbers. Oh, if I can get it with a skewer. <laughs> I'll go for this one. Mm. Perfect way to cleanse your palate after with a nice crisp cucumber. These saute are unreal, super, super smoky and just barbecued to perfection. Okay, polish off those amazing saute. Honestly, Sabrina and I have eaten a lot of saute, especially here in Malaysia. And I have to say that these were up there with some of the best. Extremely tender, super smoky, simple and delicious. It's perfect saute. So we've got a couple more things we want to eat tonight. Let's keep going. We have had an excellent day of eating so far, but some of the best food here in Georgetown doesn't come out until night. So it is nighttime now, and we have come to have a very special dish. This is called duck kway chow. So let's go try that out right now. So we are sitting down at our next stop today and we just ordered something that I've actually never tried before. This is duck kway chap. 
So basically it's a mixture of a ton of different things. So there's so many ingredients in here. On top of here we've got some fried toasted garlic and then we've got some coagulated blood, some greens, just every, basically every part of the duck. And then underneath here we should also have some noodles hiding in there. Oh, here they are. So they've actually got these kind of flattened, rounded noodles, which are the quintessential Quay Chap noodles. And then just so many different things in this bowl, I don't even know where to begin. We've got a braised uh, boiled egg. And then also I saw they put some, this may be a piece of that here, uh, pig's ear. So there is some pork in here as well as a ton of duck. So as you can see, big pieces of that coagulated blood. And let's try this broth. Just check out this broth here. It is so dark, so dark. And there's quite a bit of oil on top as well. But it looks like a very rich, flavorful broth. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. That is very flavorful. Kind of almost has like a medicinal taste to it. Kind of like cinnamon, star anise. And then also it's actually quite salty. And then you can definitely taste just a ton of duck. Maybe I will just kind of grab a spoonful or a chopstick full of some stuff. Oh, I gotta get some of the Quay Chap noodles in there. Oh, as you can see, there's a big piece of noodle there. Put that in my spoon. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. Wow, that meat was ridiculously tender. I, I really honestly couldn't tell if that was meat or intestine. But there is pretty much every part of the duck in here. I even saw they were putting maybe some of the neck or head in here as well as all of the intestines. So let's just get one more big spoonful. Just check that out. There's so much going on in this bowl. All right, let's try that. Mm. Mm. Oh, these intestines are incredible. They must have been braising away all day long. It's sort of similar to like what we have in Taiwan, Lu Wei, with the dark colored, and you often see duck Lu Wei. So let's try this little intestine. Mm. Oh, super, super tender. That is not chewy whatsoever. You can definitely not taste that as an intestine as well. And also, that toasted garlic gives it a nice garlic flavor and also quite like crunchy. This is really delicious. So as I mentioned, there is literally every single part of the duck in here. This is a delicious bowl though. It's just a medley of everything and it's just completely soaked up all of that delicious kind of medicinal tasting broth. These noodles are also incredible though. They're handmade here at the store, so the nice, fresh, homemade noodles. And then also the pig's ear is quite good, so let's take a bite with both the noodle and the pig's ear. Mm. Mm. It's a little bit more firm than the duck and the intestine, but still really good. There's just so many textures going on in this bowl. There are actually no condiments on the table, but we have been served this quite generous helping of a spicy looking sauce. So I'm gonna try that out. Um, maybe I'll just actually go for this entire egg if I can get it in my chopsticks. There we go. And I'll just dip that right in the sauce. Take a big bite of that. Mmm. But it's not too spicy. It's actually a little bit sour. And that egg has a really firm texture. So this is an extremely popular place and now I know why that bowl of duck kui chap was incredible. <laughs> It's 
So as you just saw, we found somebody selling durian and we are just going to meet up with our friends Sheena and Thomas from Chasing a Plate to eat some very interesting food, which you will see, I told you about earlier, it is the bull's penis. But we decided to surprise them with some durian. We know they are durian lovers. So this is a type of durian called black thorn and it is famous here in Penang. The stuff is not cheap, but it looks and it smells incredible. So we're gonna go meet up with them right now. Okay guys, so we have come to our final location for the day and as promised, we are with Thomas and Sheena from Chasing a Plate. And as I mentioned earlier, we are sitting down for a bowl of bull's penis. <laughs> and can't say I've ever tried this before. In fact, I did once eat testicles, so I don't know if this will taste like that, but we will see. Honestly, the broth looks incredible, so we're just gonna have to dig in and find out for ourselves. So as you can see, we've got some hefty chunks of the penis. They've just been kind of cross-sectioned with the cleaver up front and we witnessed him cutting it up and I have to say that penis must have been at least four feet long and honestly the broth and everything looks delicious so let's dig into this. Thomas and I have picked out our pieces and as I mentioned this is my first time trying this. How about you? Definitely my first time as well. Yeah so this is something maybe if you're an adventurous eater you should try in Penang so let's try it out. Cheers. Cheers. Quite oh. chewy. Very gelatinous. Very chewy. Mm. Almost like a little bit rubbery. Yeah. The broth in the soup is delicious. Quite peppery. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of a curry flavor. Yeah. It's very chewy. Very good. <laughs> it almost tastes like, or the texture is almost like gum. Mm. Like a chewing gum but it's almost a little bit stickier than gum. It seems the scent of it yeah. gets stickier. Yeah. It's really stuck in my mouth, the center of the, the bull's thing. Yeah, and there's almost kind of like a film on the outside. Mm. So you definitely gotta chew that up good, but once you chew it up, it can pretty much just slide down your slide throat. Slide on down. Very gelatinous. All right, my turn. I actually, like, it, I know that it was very long, but I expected a bit more good. Yeah. Like it's quite skinny, but um, bottoms up. Yeah, bottoms up. <laughs> I think the outside is more of the chewy part and then the inside has more of a firmness to it. Mm. It's easier to chew, definitely. It definitely has the texture of tendon. Yeah. Like the, the bit that I had. Mm -hmm. I find the outside is just the really like slimy, slimy bit. Mm. And it really kind of sticks to your teeth just like chewing gum. Not bad really. No, it's not. <laughs> it's hard to eat. <laughs> So as you just witnessed, Sheena and I tried another bite of the bull's penis and as before it is very just chewy in texture. And you're probably wondering like why are we eating this and I think Thomas can do a better job explaining it. He's been in Malaysia a lot longer than me. We've been here about four months now and we've got a really good subscriber base in Malaysia and a lot of people have told us to try torpedo soup. And it's not for novelty sake, it's because it's a very common food here, particularly for men, for men's health, if you know what I mean. So a lot of people eat it, it's an everyday thing. And of course for us, we're from New Zealand, obviously Luke's from Canada, that is unusual. We don't eat this in our country, so it is unusual for us as a type of meat, but in Malaysia it's very common, completely normal, and a lot of people told us to try it. So as I mentioned earlier, we have bought some durian, and this is a special kind of durian that is called black 
Thorn, and it is apparently very popular here in Penang. So, do you like durian? Or? I love durian. Okay. I kind of wait to get into this. All right, so let's crack this guy open, and I can already smell it before I even open this. Oh man, just check out those chunks. There's not much to it. It was kind of a small durian, but that looks really good. It's really strong. Yeah. Oh man, that's just like a punch in the face. Cheers! tasting as some of the durians have had. No. This one's much sweeter. Yeah. Like very sweet. Almost doesn't have that alcoholic taste. No, yeah. And honestly, this is a kind of like a mild durian flavor, I would say. It's just really creamy and really, really sweet. It's beautiful. Mm. And definitely end a good food tour in Malaysia with the king of fruits, durian. Okay guys, this black thorn durian is absolutely incredible, super creamy, sweet. What do you guys think? Oh, I I'm in love, love it. with it. <laughs> yeah. So creamy. So delicious. Super, Amazing. super sweet. Kind of like a little bit nutty, almost like almond. So, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you check these two out. They have an amazing YouTube channel, Chasing a Plate. All of their things will be in the description box. Go over and subscribe to them. They make awesome videos. And make sure you give, guys give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to us. And this will be our last video from Malaysia, but stay tuned. We have a lot more coming. And thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.